Okay, so give it up for the amazing and and sweet, and I think we're about a year away from him becoming famous, Dan Telfer. <laughs> hey guys. So uh, I'm from Chicago. This is my hometown, um, and so. I know things like Wrigley Field just turned 95 years old. Yeah, and uh, it's a, that's a thing. And uh, like all 95 year olds, it's haunted by failure and soaked in piss. The guy, the guy, the guy hates all sports. I um, one thing that particularly I find creepy. It's like, they do this a lot at football games. They'll do it on the holidays, but especially, like, right before a big football game. People make this, uh, this little necromancer's treat, this, uh, little homunculus. Um, it's called a turducken. Uh, are you guys familiar with the old turducken? What they do is they stuff a duck inside of a chicken inside of a turkey. Which sounds, yeah, it's like, if, it, if we're just talking about meats, like, we're just hanging out talking about meat, it's fine, like, it's just a thing, but... When you're doing it with your own horrible hands, it's a different thing. <laughs> because to make all the corpses stack inside each other properly, you have to rip all the spines out and then sew together the rib cages so meat doesn't just explode all over your kitchen. What kind of sweaty, amateur grave digger meal is that? <laughs> This was invented by someone who lives inside a blood-spattered butcher shop stuffed inside a mad scientist laboratory stuffed inside an abandoned castle tower. And in the corner, he's got an ostrich and a pen that he's saving for the day when he has a menagerie of a thousand birds to stuff inside of One thing I really love, though, is science. Uh, I'm a big science dork. Um, even meteorology, even studying the weather, but it's such a bummer when you watch a professional weatherman on TV. It's always that cliche where they just couldn't care less, and they're going, yeah, the sun's got sunglasses today for some reason. I don't know if his own rays are making him too hot or he's like too cool. Or... The current temperature is 90. The high today was 87. I don't know how that happened. I wish that I was calling sports right now. Come on! Come on! Like, you are charged with telling the populace about the turning of the planets. That is such a huge idea. If you hate your job, show up and be creative one day. You know, like, see if we're paying attention. Just, just go on TV and be like, yeah, so as you can see, we've got a big cloud front blowing in from the Pacific with a low pressure front. It's going to be pretty rainy tonight, about a 90% humidity. Also, uh... 30% chance of zombies tonight, that's right. Malabolge has had a magma front come in, and there's no more room for the accursed uh, souls in hell. So they can return to their graves, where they will claw forth and try to feast upon our flesh. Only a 30% chance, so nothing worth calling the station about. Later on tonight, a high-pressure front will be blowing those clouds out to the east. It'll actually be a great night for stargazing. Also, the rays of the moon will make you gay tonight, that's right. A, uh, a secret race of moon people that lives beneath the moon's crust has erected a giant mirror which, when it reflects the sun's rays back onto the earth, rearranges our chromosomes so we all become homosexuals. If you were born gay, you might want to head over to Dave's Bait and Tackle over on Cicero and Archer. Pick yourself up a jumbo-sized fishing net. A lot of dazed and confused newbies. Right? <laughs> Also beginning its arch across the sky. It might be a little risky in the upper atmosphere. Ron, how are you doing up in the traffic copter tonight? <laughs> so I don't really hate sports. I just don't care about them because you can't hate sports. All my friends, all my family love sports. It's just because I, I'm from the north side of Chicago, I have to deal with Wrigley Field, which is weird. Like most Sports arenas are in like a commercial or industrial area or off a highway. The Wrigley Field is smashed into this residential area with just this ring of failure apartments around it where all these people, <laughs> after their team inevitably does not do well, go to sports bar and just bang around like a bunch of retarded Tasmanian devils. <laughs> I once tried to take the train home from a show downtown. It was about three in the morning. And when I got on the train, there was nobody else there, except for a homeless man about three rows back, but he had a tarp over his lap, so he was preoccupied, you know? <laughs> and so, that's all I have. Um, and so I thought it'd be safe to, you know, put my feet up, put in my little iPod earbuds, and take out a comic book, and nerd out in public. 
and it was okay for a while, and then we get to the north side of Chicago, and we stop at Addison, which is the red line stop right by Wrigley Field. And yeah, there apparently had been a night game, because six people got on the train, three guys and three girls. And I could tell they'd come from a sports bar because a cloud of Axe body spray followed them onto the train. <laughs> Sexually transmitted diseases diving in and out of the cloud like dolphins at play. <laughs> and they could have sat anywhere on the train, but they looked at me and sat right around me in that little wow. vestibule area. And this, this girl in her little Cubs tank top and cutoff short sits right next to me. Could have sat by her boyfriend, but didn't. She sits right next to me, and she does this thing attractive people love to do to nerds, where she lets me know I'd never have a chance with her, where she's going, <laughs> like I, I've entered my 30s, I could care less, but you know, she was in her early 20s and she had something to prove. Like someone might fall in love with her one day, they wouldn't. <laughs> After a while, it starts to escalate. And I hear her say through my earbuds, Yeah, look! They make nerds out of now. And that, that blank I left in the conversation is a slur, so I don't want to say what it was. But imagine, if you will, I'm kind of gangly. Imagine if I was made out of cigarettes and she had a British accent. That's what she said I was a nerd made out of. <laughs> made no sense. Only a drunk, evil person would say it. So I made the mistake that a lot of nerds make. I blurted out a comeback I've been sitting on for 20 years. <laughs> I pulled out my earbuds and I said, This coming from the Voltron of venereal disease. <laughs> They were in their early 20s, they didn't know what Voltron was. And then, the guy who was dating the girl, his eyes opened up like this much. He got it. And he explained to his girlfriend, in lieu of getting any that night, that Voltron was a giant cartoon robot from the 1980s. With a laser sword that he used to fight demons. But, first he had to assemble himself from smaller, lion-shaped robots. Therefore, she was an amalgamation of venereal disease, assembled and allowed to walk sentient and golem-like about Chicago. Car, train car. And for one second, I was like, I'm gonna win this one time! But no, they were gonna punch the fertility right out of me as soon as I got off the train. And then from out of nowhere, the homeless guy, three rows back, goes, He just called you the clap monster! <laughs> Thank you, Thank you so much, you guys.